everybody and welcome. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations and I got a quick, super fun and absolutely stunningly beautiful Christmas ornament craft for you. Now, y'all know if you've been following me, I love some um, alcohol inks. They've got a lot of versatility and they do some super cool things. And if you've been hesitant to try them, you are going to love them after this one. So, I have some glass balls. Mine just happened to come individually wrapped, which is great for gift giving. But you can do this same craft with um, the kind of the flat glass balls or plastic balls. They work with plastic balls, so you can get them from the dollar store if you wanted to use the plastic because you need it to be cat or <laughs> kid friendly. It it's just as nice with the plastic. What you don't want is something like, you know, maybe some of the star-shaped ones because getting getting the color up into the points could be really super awkward and um, not work so well. But it is as basic as grabbing some colors and I have to tell you, don't agonize over whether you think the colors are going to work together or not, I have yet to see, when I'm doing this in class, I have yet to see a color combination that does not work, that does not look absolutely lovely, quite honestly. So even ones where people are using colors that I'm thinking, it has been stunningly beautiful. So um, let, me, let me just give you an idea. I've got a couple over here that are drying. Um, check this out. Look how beautiful that patterning is and some of that glazing is. It's just drying. There's another earthen one in kind of some softer tones, a little bit more white. Um, this guy is mostly all in, in soft blues. Um, this one has some oranges. I have way over there, I've got some purples and some pinks. I mean, just so many things you can do. So let's... Let's give this one a try. I'm going to start with a chili pepper. Because, and here's the thing. Alcohol inks dry very, very quickly because, as you know, the alcohol evaporates very quickly. And as soon as you add another, so once this is dry in here, as soon as I add another color of alcohol, the alcohol in the second ink is going to reactivate some of the ink in the first. So don't think that you can get some set patterning going. Not gonna happen. And you do not need a lot. So we are going to use the alcohol ink and we're gonna use some canned compressed air. You can get this on Amazon. I'll drop a link where I got this. I did find that these lids tend to pop off so I did a little bit of hot glue around it rim to get it off but I have seen some compressed air at my dollar store too so you know whatever works and we are just going to as soon as we tilt tilt this over there'll be almost like a drop that comes out and we're just going to run a bead down one side down the other down the middle why not it's Christmas we're kind of candy striping that baby now, I don't mind on this one to just kind of let it go. You know, I'm kind of swirling some of the colors around and just letting it sort of dry. I'm not blowing it yet because there's not too much to blow. Um, but let's do that. Let's add, I also have a color called watermelon. So one of these is a pinata color. One is a ranger color. You know, whatever. Alcohol ink is kind of alcohol ink when it comes to Christmas balls, right? So this one is also kind of a red, but I think it's maybe a little bit more transparent, but we'll just add some drops of it. And you wanna put the lid back on your inks, just one, because they stain, so you don't wanna knock them over. And two, you don't wanna dry them out. And then we're kinda of using the compressed air to kinda of blow that around. Now I'm gonna add I'm gonna add some sunbright yellow. I've got sunbright yellow and I've got some mermaid blue. You know, I don't know. We'll just we'll just 
see how they go, how they look. So as soon as I add some of the yellow where some of the other red and watermelon colors were, it starts to move that around. So these guys are gonna do what they're gonna do. And I've got a bit of a puddle of it down in the bottom. So I'm using the air more than anything else. You can do short bursts, bigger bursts, long, slow blow, I don't know, play. Experiment with it. This gets cold as you start to use it, so just letting you know that. And now, I'm gonna introduce some of the blue. So you can kinda of see some of the tones, some of the yellow and some of the difference in there. Oh yes, that's nice. Okay, I'm liking that, I'm gonna do a little drop down at the bottom. And some of these you could add metallics to if you wanted, the silvers, the golds, the brasses. You could um, not add. They are beautiful either way. Okay, I want a little bit of blue. So I've got blue around the top, but I'm missing some down on this side. So I'm just gonna kind of even it out a little bit. And that's all that you do, right? Is you just kind of play. You just see how it goes, how they mix, how they blend, what's going on with them. I can't even begin to tell you because they're gonna do their own thing. So you could do all of your balls in, in one color grouping, right? That you want them all to kind of match. They're all gonna be individual. They're all gonna look different, but they've at least got a lot of the same colors in there. So I'm just kind of blowing a little bit around the bottom. And because you've got this long nozzle, you're able to sort of direct the air around there, how, you know, where you want to blow. And then ultimately it doesn't move anymore because the alcohol is evaporated. The alcohol is gone. Do we want to do, do we I have some brass? Do we want to do some metallics in there? Or no? You want to just see it as it is? You're all screaming into the camera and I can't hear you, so I don't know. All right, we'll do a little brass. Just, what the heck, right? Okay, let's not do metallic. So you could just leave it as this. But the real magic comes when we do the next step. So I am going to put this off to the side and I'm gonna let it dry just to finish kind of airing out before the next step. And let's grab a different one and let's do different colors. So while that one's just finishing and I just have it sitting over here, so I have an egg curtain. So I just uh, have got it sitting over there. It's not moving because the alcohol inks are sort of dry, it's just finishing. So we did some pinks and reds and yellows and stuff. Let's try, let's try some earth tones. So I'm going to do, let's do a little bit of, I don't know, let's do some caramel. And you could do like, oh, you could do anything. You could just do whatever you want. But let's do some caramel here. And this time, I'm just gonna blow it a little bit. Just get a bit of patterning happening. And teak wood, let's do a dark brown. Because again, I wanna give you, I think like saying that I'm gonna use the blues, and I'm gonna use the pinks and some of the bright greens, kinda obviously, yes, they're gonna look awesome. But I think sometimes maybe some of these other colors, like the browns and the neutrals, maybe you don't realize they are gonna be just as awesome. So let's get a little bit of the brown in there, a little bit of that teak wood. And now I've got a fair bit of ink in there. So let's move it around a little bit. And we're gonna add a little bit of yellow, but this time it's Dijon, so it's a little bit more mustardy yellow and not that bright sunshine yellow. And I'm just gonna try and run it down 
melon. I was trying to run it down where I didn't have color, but it went where there was color. It just was attracted to the ink already there. And again, they've got a mind of their own. They're gonna do whatever the heck they wanna do, so that's fine. And I think I'm running out. These are all partial um, containers of, of the compressed air from, from a Christmas ornament class. So I'm just using up. So you'll see this is starting to gather in some darker spots, which I think will end up looking awesome in the next step. So I'm gonna add a touch of green in there and I've got an olive green that I'm adding in. That's what it's called. Um, we'll see how that goes. I like this one in my paintings. So we'll see how I like it in my Christmas ornament. <laughs> All right, that looks like I'm getting some good looks in there. But this one, where did I put that? I'll, I'll, I will add a little bit of metallic just to show you. It kind of moves around. Now it's a little bit heavier so you can hear the ball that's in there to shake it up. Usually what happens is you start to see the metallics all sit down on the bottom and it looks like a clear alcohol layer up on top. So you just need to shake these really heavy and they are heavier. Um, than the other inks, so they move a little bit differently. All right, let's, let's see how that goes. This is so much fun, guys. All right. Okay, so I was doing that and and the, and the ink was whooshing up from the bottom. It looked like a, I got carried away. It just, it was like this little wave coming up and it's just so much fun. So here you can kind of see that we've got some of those ambers and the burnt colors. There's some green in there. I can't really see it all that great, but we're gonna put that one to the side. And let me make sure that all my inks are closed. And we're gonna go back to our first one. So this is our, our greeny blue, or, or, well, it's, it looks sort of green, but it's like that um, patina sort of blue. What one did I use? Mermaid. So it's got kind of a green and blue tone to it and the reds and pinks, a little bit of that yellow. And here's the next spot that we do. So you can do this and have the light reflect through it, or you can choose to add a backing to it to really highlight it. So you could do like a silver acrylic paint inside, a gold acrylic paint, or in this case, I'm gonna use white. You know, a cream would work. But here's the thing about this. So I'm gonna do just one squirt of that paint, which is really, really super thick. So mine is thick. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. I do not want it super, super, super runny because I want it to coat the inside of my ball. I'm gonna add just enough water. So this is like one drop two drops to try and get it moving. The runnier it is, the more it's just gonna slide around and not grip. So I've got that in, I wanna be able to mix them together and I want it to start to coat. So I just put my thumb over the top, don't forget to cover the top. It's gonna to come shooting out at you and you just start shaking it and moving it around and twisting the ball in different directions, moving it around and it's going to start, you'll have some patches where maybe there wasn't any ink there after all, and that's going to look totally white, right? And that's okay, I got a spot where here where I don't have any, any of the acrylic there at all. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So now look at those colors popping, right? You totally miss that when you don't have that filling. Now, I've got some spot here that doesn't have any of the white acrylic. So as this starts to dry, what I'm gonna do first, rather than sitting here shaking forever, I am going to tilt it in my egg tray with that section down, have a little cloth to wipe your thumb off, just so that 
any of that loose paint starts to pull down there and I'll let gravity do that part for me. And then once it's all covered, I'll turn it completely upside down, right? So I'll turn it completely upside down this way. This needs a little more drying actually. I see some of the ink is still moving around in this guy. And that's why you just want to let this have a chance to kind of dry thoroughly before you would add your acrylic paint so that otherwise the acrylic paint is just going to start moving your inks around. But this, that spot is starting to fill in a little bit. So you're going to have some of that loose paint that's going to slide down, fill that spot rather than my having to shake it forever. And once that's totally done, I'll just turn it so that all of that is facing, is turning upside down so that any of that extra um, acrylic paint leaks out entirely, right? I have these ones sitting this way to just let any of the excess flow out of it, okay? So now let's do the same with this one and see. So this was our earth tones, this was our caramel, our, our brown, our yellow, our, like our Dijon yellow, and um, we added a little bit of that uh, brass in there the metallic brass. It's so, this part is so fun because it's like the big reveal, right? It's like everything now, all of a sudden, I mean, it looks really pretty just holding it nice and close. Um, but, so thumb over and let's shake that baby up. You're gonna like this one. I like this one. Okay, so look, we've got a big patch here that's kind of golden. Look at this. Look at here, all the burnt umber colors coming out, and some of those earthenware greens. That's just stunning, guys. Look at look at that bronzy color in there. That's the teak wood backed with some of that brass. And just the details. Can you guys see the details popping in there? Okay, awesome. So again, this one's pretty well coated. There's just one little spot. So I'm going to turn it over and let it sit. The one thing that I do is I have trays. So you can see places where the extra acrylic paint has poured out. I turn the balls around to let the paint move down into areas that it hasn't reached the acrylic paint. So I keep it moving around while it's all drying so that it's going to dry evenly. Let them continue to dry until they are fully dry inside. And then I will add the cap back on. Okay. So I don't want to cap them when the acrylic is still swirling around because then um, that's not, that paint is gonna stay wet inside and it will tend to slide down to the bottom of the ball instead. So I wanna just keep rotating them. You know, every, every 15 minutes or so as you walk by, just give them a quarter turn and let the acrylic still be moving and coating. If you see that there's a spot that didn't happen to have any, it slid off, then you just rotate it to that section, have it on the, on the bottom side, so that gravity pulls some of your loose paint, if there is any, down into that spot. And then you can go back and you can add more as you need to, um, to be able to fill it. But that's as easy as it is. And as you can see, they are drop dead gorgeous. Do it in the colors of your Christmas, do a variety of them just to have fun and see how the colors explode for you. They are perfect to give as little hostess gifts. You know, taking a little handmade ornament, I think is such a beautiful gesture at Christmas time is just a small, special little token, um, teacher's gifts. It's awesome, guys. I hope you give this a try. I hope you let me know if you do. Put pics into the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about this. I know you're gonna love this one. And um, really, if you don't have a lot of artistic talent, this is the craft for you because you are going to look 
so good if you're giving this as a gift because you cannot mess it up. It is virtually impossible. I swear. Give it a go. Let me know. Until next time, take care.